going up these days, and that's the main thing that you see occurring. But so I'd open up to the to the audience now. If we could kind of restrict our questions right now to budget related questions, we got a few other topics, and then at the end we'll open it up to anything you want to talk about. But any budget related questions or comments that y'all would like to make? Gary, the only other thing that I might add is with the rental car tax, we are the keepers of the funds. So we hold on to that until it's time to pay Dallas and Fort Worth. However, any interest income from that, we get to keep completely. Now, interest rates right now are low, so they're not very significant, but there have been years when the interest rates have been significant to add to our coffers. That's a good point. Yes, ma'am. I'm just wondering, is there anything in the budget in the future for expansion or improvement of the animal shelter? Not currently, and uh, that's, we get that, asked that frequently, and for several years we had, uh, within our longer term plan, an animal shelter uh, in that budget. At some point in time we do have to expand it, but what we are told by our staff out there and the Animal Shelter Advisory Board, as well as the, as I understand it, the, the girl, the gap girls, that do most of the adoptions out there, are you a gap girl? Well, thank you for what you do. But uh, that that is, while it's, uh, in, the, in terms of public buildings, it's really not that old. It was built in the 70s, but it is adequate. Do you have a differing opinion on that? Well, I think the dog section is adequate. I will say that the cat section is not really adequate. I think right. the cages or penalty column are not much bigger than the bottoms of these seats. And so when we let the animals out on the Saturdays or Wednesdays, they are empty. Okay, well, we will certainly look at that. Uh, that is a that is a extremely expensive facility to, to add. Uh, it's, so, but we will, we will certainly look at it, and obviously our city council has heard it. By the way, I should have said this earlier. Our mayor is not here tonight because she is at uh, a meeting with the uh, Fort Worth Builders Association, and she. She and the city were nominated for an award, and uh, well, anyway, but she would be here if were it not for that. Uh, and I, I want to follow up now with uh, a comment on this. The Gap Girls, you may not know this, but they're, for, unfortunately, for many years, our animal shelter did not adopt all that many animals. There was many, many animals that were euthanized. And we still euthanize animals. I don't want to, we're not a, a no-kill uh, shelter. But there's a, a group of girls from Trinity High School, and it's, I'm going black. The GAP stands for Girls oh, Awareness Program. Yeah. And uh, they, several years ago, adopted our animal shelter with the goal of adopting dogs. I cannot sit here right off the top of my head and tell you what percent uh, are now adopted, but it is the lion's share of our adopt. I understand we, we do get animals that are not adoptable. They're mean, they're sick, a number of things. But that group of girls has made a world of difference in that animal shelter. And it's uh, even if you're not an animal lover and you don't, you're not that interested in what the euthanasia rate is. For our employees that have to do it, it is a huge psychological relief that they don't have to literally kill as many animals as they used to. Because it, even mean dogs, when you, it, it's, a, it's not a fun thing for them to do. It's hard on our employees. So I thank you, Gap Girls, for what you do. What grade are you in? <laughs> we made a note of your interest in the captain section. Yes, sir. Uh, Vince Bassett, the Covington Hill, the city is on there. In our neighborhood, the power lines are underground. Of course, we get power from hardwood, another subdivision, so if that goes out, our neighborhood goes out. I noticed on Ash Lane, unless I missed it on the slide, they widen it. They put the poles back up with the electricity. Is there anything in the budget where when you do renovations like that, we can put the power lines underground, 
so there's less outages? That's a, that's a good question. The uh, All of our new streets, and I'm, I'm talking about new development, not reconstruction of old streets, but all of our new development is required to have underground utilities. When we go to rebuild, to retrofit an old street, the underground utilities is extremely expensive. I'm, I'm talking millions. I, I, uh, it, it, it can be as expensive as the street. So when we built Ash Lane, there was quite a discussion on that. And the determination was, primarily because of the tree cover, that those poles could go back there and Encore will, a lot of people don't like the way they trim them, but, but Encore, they're, they're situated such that we don't think it's going to be a, an outage problem. It, from an appearance, aesthetics, <coughs> they're pretty well hidden. Uh, I mean, you, you, you thought you caught it, you, you caught it right. But they're kind of in trees, so we made the determination not to do it there. When we rebuilt Main Street, uh, a very small portion of that is underground. Most of it we moved to the back of the property lines because of the expense. Uh, it, the Main Street used to be littered with that portion between Airport Freeway and Harwood used to be littered with uh, coal and out of the curb line. But all of that is, is cost driven. Encore, they charge us. They have to move the utilities at their expense. But if we require that they be put underground, we have to pay for it, we being the city, the citizens, and uh, it is extremely expensive. So even when it's all dug up and we're widening it, it's still too expensive? Yes. The ratio wide? Yes. It is. It is just cost prohibitive. Where we can, we will, but and we look at it every time. Uh, a good that, example. Excuse me, but that is something that city council is very aware of. Okay, good. And we, we discuss that in every it, 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 the Bays Road is an example of that. That uh, we put the overhead crossings underground, but we just we could not put the. One well, reason, one reason I'm asking is because we're so electricity dependent now with computers. So many because we've got I couldn't even tell you the number, but there's probably thousands. There's four at every corner, but there's a sidewalk, and uh, so it, it will be here about 13, 14 years. We'll be lucky if we get it. Mr. Zimmer? Um, is, is it generally true that each of our debt issuances pay for themselves? The projects they fund save us the money required to pay back the debt over the time? Depends on what the purpose of it is. The, the water and sewer is what we refer to as revenue bonds. And, and that is, you're exactly right. The revenue that's derived from the project, I mean, not necessarily from the pipeline that goes in, but from the water fund, pays back the debt. Uh, if we're building a, a senior center, for example, that is, that there is no expectation that that will pay itself. It doesn't generate any revenue. So that is just something that the citizens, that our taxes pay for. So there's some of it, yes, some of it, no simple way. Did that answer your question? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, has there been any consideration to helping us on J. Carr Park, to keeping us from walking in the mud? It really, it's, uh, when you see a guy down there pushing his wheelchair around in the mud, you know, and the, and the, and the ladies that come in there push their kids around, the only place probably they've got to exercise. But, you know, it makes, I took my dog, I always do it, not to a Bear Creek Park. They got a better place to exercise the Bear Creek Park for the dogs than we do in South Uless. And you know, <clears throat> I had it, I was talking to the guy down there today and he said he considered himself living in South Uless, a second class citizen. His words, not mine. But you know, I've been walking that park since probably 70, five or so, you know, and it just keeps getting muddy. They, you know, they put a little gravel on it, but water comes, you know, that is a, and uh, <coughs> is there any consideration to ever helping us with it? Well, I a lot of people, a lot of people use that part, yeah. lots of people. I want to, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. My granddaughter, 
I got two granddaughters living in South Hills. They are not second class citizens. I didn't, I, I'm just telling <laughs> you what the guy I'm said. Okay? I raised my kids in South Hills. Yeah. My I didn't grandchildren live in South Hills. Yeah. They are no second class citizens. I, I'm right. just so telling you what I, the guy said. I'm okay. going with you. But no, uh, I can sell I hear that all the time, time, but I always say, well, my, my grandkids aren't second class citizens. Right? They're, they're first class well, or higher. They may ride in the pilot seat, but you know, let's talk about that for a minute, because I know you brought this up. Before. Anyway, I bet, it's, you know, if you see a guy pushing a wheelchair down there in the mud, and those ladies down there with, <coughs> with the strollers, I can show, show you the tracks down there right yeah. now. And you could put blacktop on that thing, put a little curve on it where water run over it or whatever, and uh, it would help us, you know? There's one guy used to come down there and carry two pair of shoes, one to walk in and one to throw in the back of his pickup because he's not going to get in the house with those shoes, you know. Well, let's, let's talk about that for just a minute. The, uh, number one, the North Euless versus South Euless. What was that? If, uh, the North Euless versus South Euless. The very trail that you're talking about in Bear Creek Park, that was paid for with a state grant. And it is a very nice concrete trail. If you had to walk that thing, you ought to. If you keep walking to the east, you come to a dirt park. Or not dirt, but a, what do you call that, Ray? Right? Uh, crush line. Crush line. It's, so it, it's, not, it, it's not that we like North was better, so we built concrete trails. The Texas Department of Transportation paid for the blind share of that trail that you're talking about. It was a new trail and it was built out of concrete. The, but the other thing that you brought this up, and we've looked, I've looked into it several times after it's been brought up. We have people that run, we have people that walk, we have people that push strollers, wheelchairs. There are many people that prefer the, the, the surface that you get from those crushed limestone trails. That not, not everyone agrees with you. Uh, now we ought to keep it maintained, uh, in, uh, but we have trails at uh, Heritage Park that are crushed limestone. I walked them, walked all of them. Yeah. Uh, our, our newest trails, they are absolutely, <coughs> uh, I don't, we don't have any new trails other than villages of Bear Creek that's something new that, that are crushed limestone to run. But we, it's not a, it is very expensive to do what you're talking about, but I don't know that it's a money issue so much as what people tell us that they want. We have heard you clearly, and but obviously you're not the only one that walks in the park. The challenge to the park structure, Ray McDonald has been back there, is to make sure that park is, that, that trail is maintained. <coughs> it is, all of our trails, for the most part, are in flood, all of our parks, for the most part, are in flood plains. And so there is water that comes up and they flow over the trail. So it's a constant problem. But he is, is charged with maintaining them. But I, I just don't, and I know, I'm not trying to argue with you, I just don't want, I don't want you to leave here thinking that we have a charge to, to go pave those trails, because there are lots of people that disagree with your position. They want the unimproved trails. Uh, and there's some of them, I, I've walked that park for years myself. I, under, I know exactly what you're talking about. And, and when it was, I don't think on, anybody likes to walk in mud. I'm gonna be you honest. You shouldn't be walking in mud. You know? I don't. But you, you should not be walking in mud. Well, we uh, are. But, and and if you have a wedding way. down there at that pagoda, the people that's gonna be to that wedding is gonna be standing in mud <coughs> on the trail. You know, it, if it you should, have a wedding down it, there. It should but, be improved. It should not be mud. But, but I'm, I, mean, I don't know if any, there, there's any walkers. Some people like to walk in the street. Some people like to walk in the sidewalk. Some people like to walk on that kind of trail, and, and particularly runners. I don't know if you're yeah. You run on the street. Well, when you take your dog down there to walk, him, and, and, he, and he gets mud all over his feet, and then you take him, put him in your in your vehicle. You know, at Bear Creek, they have a place to wash your dog. You know, at the at the dog park down there, excellent dog park. Well, I, we, 
they will look better. at it, and I'll, yeah. I'll look at it myself to, to make sure that it's, it's maintained to the quality that we have. And, it, and, and if we ever get uh, outpouring of people that agree with your position, we'll look at it seriously. But I'm serious. There's not. There are people that really want that. So, I, right. When you're looking at that, also check into decomposed granite. Do we use that at a lot of my shopping centers for the parking islands? And it handles water extremely well. The water goes through it. It stays dry. It stays in place. Uh, and much less expensive, of course, than either asphalt, which wouldn't last at all, or concrete. Uh, but it still gives you the natural surface to walk on. And it's a pretty good deal. Decomposed granite, you might just see, see if that would work better than compressed limestone. Because it's been working well for us in the, in the different islands that we've got. We'll look at that. Any of us? Uh, this is a good opportunity for access users. Would that not work for his complaints? Sure. sure. If, uh, Explain to him about that. Let me get to the it, Yeah, the, the, the access ULIS is a, you can, you, you can sign up for it on our website. And uh, it's, you can use your telephone, your smartphone, or you can do it over the computer. And it, it basically emails us complaint, and we keep track of it and respond to it quickly. We have a, lady that did this recently on a stop sign and we had great confusion because stop sign was actually fixed before we had time to process the complaint. So when we got out there the stop sign was standing up and had to call her back and say, Are you sure we got the right stop sign? Well, it's like, probably the only time we ever beat it like that. But that time we <laughs> we beat it. So yeah, look on our website, ulist.org and you can sign up for it. What other questions do we have on the budget? Yeah, I got one. Yes, sir. ADA, these sidewalks, are, the ramps they're putting in, over here on Lake Harris and all that, they put the ramps in, but there's a fire hydrant right in the middle. What happens? We, on Harris? Well, on Harris and uh, what is the other one? Dallas, where they're putting all the new sidewalks in, the ramps. You go up the ramp one way, there's a fire hydrant. Uh, you go up the other way, there's a fire hydrant. Why didn't they? We'll, we will look at that, but what I hope is we just haven't got around moving them. The fire hydrant, yeah, because it's it's we got to do that too. It's if it's then you got to clear up the sidewalk and just put in to move the fire hydrant. Why didn't they do it before? There's a minimum clearance. If it did not meet the minimum clearance, then we need to take a look at that. So I need to make sure you said it's on Harris. Yeah, around here. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be the entire. There is a portion of that that can be encumbered by a fire hydrant, but there's yeah, a minimum. Yeah, about this If you get uh, you that, know, would you not, that, that, that would not be it. I don't know the specific dimension, but it's three foot. I think it's foot. 42 inches. 42 yeah. inches. Yeah. Yeah. So and then the well, mayor said that in her newsletter, she said when the water bill, these people that blocked the sidewalk, they're going to, uh, citizens on patrol is supposed to come around and write them warnings. Where have they been? You never see them. The citizen on patrol? Or the, huh? The, you, you don't ever see the citizen on patrol? No, and they never get no warnings. Same people are doing it all the time. I'm handicapped and I walk my dogs. I'm, Hector and Pecos, the guy right in the corner, he's got three driveways, two du uh, one double, two singles. He uses a double, one single, he don't use the other single, but he parks a car behind it and he blocks the sidewalk all the time. Our patrol commander is back there, he would make note of it. That's the other thing on Access Ulyss. I mean, we got bookies of streets and not that many police officers and code officers, but take, pick up the phone and call us. Call I hate the bond, right? Sir? I hate the bond here probably in case of No, the that's what they're or something. That's, that's the that's the worst words we hate to hear. That, we we would have called you but we didn't want to bother you. Yeah. What are they there for? What I'm here for. Call me. Yeah, Flag yeah. me down when I drive by your house. But uh, that access units, they will get out there quickly and we'll I sort of say take care of it. I, it. that's a big claim, so they'll take care of it. But they will give them a warning. And if they don't, if they keep doing it, they'll write them a ticket. But we hope we don't have to write tickets, but they got to okay. please call us. And we'll look at, uh, Mr. Ackerman back there has made note of the Harris and Dallas, and we'll, because it, we, we absolutely don't want to do anything foolish where we yes, build a nice ramp and you're met with a fire hydrant. It didn't make no sense, you know, them putting all that new sidewalks in and the ramps and yeah. it's I, a fire hydrant, you can't go nowhere. I trust he will report that there's a logical explanation. Right. That's right. <laughs> you will that. Something, Gary, something else on that that I, I was brought up to my attention yesterday. On some of the ones where we've got it, you know, you've got a 
fire hydrant, but it, it's in the, the dirt area, and then a stop sign, and then it comes to a point like this, the homeowner can't, can't mow that, they can't get to it, it's, you can't do anything with it. We really need to look at concreting that little delta up to at least to the fire hydrant where the homeowner can do something other than hang out with their grass whip trying to get it to the right height. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point. We've been trying to address that with the homeowners that were from an irrigation standpoint, the mowing where we would do something. Yeah. Uh, so I, again, Mr. Ackerman back there is in charge of that. He'll and to speak to your citizens on patrol, Mr. Martin and I uh, would go on patrol, and we, we did those courtesy tickets for quite a while. But again, those are just courtesy tickets, and yeah. it, it did actually clean it up in the one area of town that we were doing it in. But you know, there's, there's only a couple of people that do the citizens on patrol, and they can't catch the whole city. So the access you would really help. Allowed out after 7:30. <laughs> <laughs> now my husband put over 500 hours in citizens on patrol last year, and I do make him come home occasionally to do chores. <laughs> well, somebody's got to cook. Remember, they're yeah. volunteers. The police officers yeah. are there 24 hours a day. You know, all you got, if, if you'll just let them know. I, they're not, I don't mean that they're, they're going to take away from their time, their priority stuff, but they'll, they'll get to it. It might be the next day or the next night, or, but they'll get to it. Thank you. Just give them a call. Gary, along those lines, on this on patrol. Uh, have you been through the CPA or CSA files? Pardon? Have you been through the CPA systems uh, police? Assistant fire captains. We need to come and go through it so you can volunteer and help with that deal. Because we'd love having volunteers. We'd love it. But I'm handicapped. I can't chase nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to chase anybody. They issue you a sniper rifle. It'll be different so far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get a volunteer for the police academy. Yeah. If you still have that pretty red car, I haven't seen it in a while, but. No, I sold it. Yeah, I'm sure it'd make a great citizen on the trail car. <laughs> 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 yeah, a scooter. Yeah. Yes, sir. 